Yeah, if it comes out cooked. It's always the key, isn't it, with cooking? How about all the veggies? Is that going to be good? The sauce is going to be good? Veggies, so yeah, I'm doing roasted water chestnuts, roast potatoes, and a port and mushroom jus. I knew what I wanted to do, whether I execute it 100 per cent is yet to be seen. Ella, you're working like a Trojan today. Hey, you're one of the first in your oven with the uh, turduk and kwa. Yeah, oh, that's good. This is interesting. We've got a lot going on here. Radishes, beans, beautiful little baby turnips. Are you going to use all of this? Oh, I think I'm going to use most of it. I'm going to just do really good roast veggies and cider and caramelised onion jus. Sounding great, looking great at the moment. Well done. Can you be spoken to? Yes, Ray. Yeah, I stepped away from the hammer, yeah. OK, how's it going? Got potatoes happening, got some baking fennel in the oven, I've got some asparagus ready to go. The meat's looking good and yeah. the hey, sauce. Would you, and the fact that you didn't cut it the way you... Um, well, look, I just did my best, Ray. Even if I've done it the wrong way, I have to move on. I can't stop here. So what's going on here? Is this your sauce, your jus? Yeah, I'm going to make my jus outside of the pan. OK. Yeah. What else are you doing? Green beans with a almond, chilli and orange crust. Baby root vegetables. Potatoes roasted in duck fat with anchovies. Well, good okay. luck. Good on you. Thank you. 30 minutes to go, everyone. Uh, chef, it's just while well, I was peeling it, it just went all, all around the place. You can't work in a pig sty. You do want to work in a kitchen, don't you, at the end of this? Absolutely. OK, chef. let's start now. No more mess on the floor, no more untidiness. OK, okay chef. He says, uh, you've done it again, you, you're working in a pig sty. And, uh, well, I don't know what to say. Let's just keep one of these on your station. I don't think a bucket for these trimmings is big enough. <laughs> OK? I've cooked it slightly higher temperature because I got it in a little bit late. So, we'll see. 20 minutes to go. They look good in the oven, but are they cooked? It's the ultimate reveal. You can't tell anything until you actually cut the thing open. The middle could be the best slice, or it could be the worst slice. It could be the life of them or the death of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll see single or swift. Oh, 57. Probably needs another 10 minutes. So the theory is, from Mr Martin Bosley, that if it's between 68 to 72 degrees in the thickest part, then it will be cooked perfectly. Oh. 68, that's cool. I can rest now. And this is 44, it's not too good, is it? When I got my tudakin in the oven, I knew I was later than I should have. Just like a little chain of things can slightly just tip you off your balance. When I made my veggies, I didn't feel happy and full of enthusiasm as I should. 15 minutes to go, guys, and we want your two duck and qua up plated and ready for us to try. What's going on here? Just a uh, bit of port. It is a mushroom and port stock. So I've just reduced it down. Good luck with that. Thank you. Just trying to plate up my vegetables and my puree. OK. What's happening in the oven? Let's have a look. It's looking good, Chef. What's the thermometer doing in the oven? I just put it there, just now. You're not baking that as well? No, Chef. Sorry, no, just, just put so it there. So what's the temperature, mate? 58. 58 chef. degrees, 12 chef. minutes to go. Yes, yeah, Chef. Don't go cooking this. No, Chef. That's not going to help it, is it? No, Chef. No, it's not. Ten minutes to go, I'm staring at my roast in the oven, thinking it needs more cooking. Probably the most nervous I've been. The trick to winning the challenge is obviously the accuracy with cooking it right. Got five minutes left right now, everybody. Hurry up. I'm struggling. <laughs> oh, my God. And it's all coming down to the last minute. It is per normal. I'm even seeing Aaron behind the eight ball today. If you get behind, you probably start making mistakes. Yeah, and I guess that's what happened. A minute to go, everyone. The last 10 minutes of the challenge was frantic and mental. I just it was a mess. I think that's the most pressed for time, I think. 30 seconds left. I'm just kind of giving myself sort of a mantra of just keep it going, keep it going, right up to the end. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. 
step away from the bench. Once I step back from a plate, I feel pretty stink because it didn't look as nice as I wanted it to. Not very happy with it, but pretty terrible. It's probably slightly overcooked. I'm really furious if we go home. Okay, Paula, you're first. We'll taste your food now, please. I feel pretty horrible, really, because it could have been so much better if I'd just had more time. So how'd that go, Paula? It was hard, just timing again, but hopefully it tastes good. So you're going to carve it and you're going to plate a piece for us. It's big, isn't it? Yeah. No one liking those gentle <laughs> waves and layers through there. You can yeah. see where the duck is, the quail is. What do you think, Paula? Yeah, you know, I'm actually quite pleased with it now. Pleased yeah. or relieved? Relieved, relieved. Two duck and quail with roast potatoes, spring veggies with date and pea puree. Paula, I love it. Beautiful and crispy, and the whole thing is cooked really, really well. Really tender throughout. The seasoning is spot on. Thank you. It just screams flavour at me. The date puree is inspired. It's beautiful. That is a lovely dish. Great. Thank you. The date puree, it was a fantastic addition to the dish. Beautifully seasoned the whole way through. You wouldn't want to go a grain of salt either way. Well done. Great. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. It was such a relief. I'm so hopefully I've done enough. Taking the dish up to the judges, I'm really not sure what to expect today. The initial words that sprang to mind when I saw it was dreadful. It looks like it has been through an Oliver Stone movie. There's no spirit of generosity on that plate, and that's what cooking is. It's the greatest gift you can give somebody else, and that just looks like you're being mean. I was trying to do something creative and play up the different vegetables in a modern way. I don't understand what you're trying to achieve with this. You've got a few leaves around there, one carrot, one piece of asparagus, which is about as limp as it's ever going to be. That's grim. They just described the dish as dreadful. I'm very disappointed and have this gut feeling that today is going to be my day to go home. Social. Mate, hey, your presentation today. Eh, wrong. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. This does not belong on MasterChef. And I'm worried for you big time. I haven't even tasted anything. Right, let's cut it up. We've walked down this lonesome road with you before as far as presentation goes. It looks like your imitation of something that you think the way restaurant food should be. But let's taste it. Surprisingly enough, actually tasted quite good. But oh boy, presentation. Needs some work, buddy. If you stay in this competition, by some miracle, you can't present food like that anymore. Yes, chef. I want to impress the judges, and I haven't impressed them much in this competition. So going home today would just be a kick in the guts, and I'm really not ready for that yet. This challenge certainly separated the boys from the girls, didn't it? <laughs> I'm really surprised to see Aaron in the bottom, and it must be a shock for him because it's his first time there. I can see that written on his face. Pretty disappointing results for all of you guys. Aaron, it was rough today. Baby fennel was stringy, and the sauce was like you'd finished it with Vegemite. It was clumsy. Not the elegance we're used to from you. We expected much, much more. Fortunately, you delivered great technique with your Tadak and Choir. And that's enough to secure your future with us for another week. Take a seat. Thank you very much. Good luck. That's not where I want to be again. <laughs> I want to be, you know, right there at the end, so... Mm. Being at the bottom again, it's deja vu. It's emotionally and mentally stressful because one minute you're safe and the next minute you're going home. Social. 
Man thought one side of your Tudakinqua looked like an Oliver Stone movie. And you know what we all thought about the presentation. Bad execution, bad idea. What were you thinking? Um, so if I'm really disappointed with myself. I'm disappointed in you too, Sushi. Elliot, is this a case of be careful what you wish for? Um, I don't think so. I think that's probably the challenge that I wanted. Um, something really, really hard that was going to test me. We gave you Everest, but you didn't even make it past base camp. No, it was terrible. It was rubbish. Your Tudakinqua looks somewhat like a roasted guinea pig. And even then, a dry one. Just everything of it was overcooked. It's a cooking show, it's not a bloody cremation show, so... Which is what I did, I ruined the food. Sushil, so, that presentation was dreadful. Yes, Luckily for you, you'll get the chance to stop trying to be clever and just start cooking from your heart. Let's leave this one in the past where it belongs and look to your MasterChef future. Thank Good you. Good boy, well done, mate. Grab a seat. <laughs> Good boy, well done. Thank you. It was definitely a very close call. I dodged another bullet, escaped by a skin of the teeth, and I'm really sad to see Elliot go because Elliot and I have come a long way. But at the same time, I want this so bad, and I'm here to fight another day. Elliot, I'm sorry, that means your days in the Master Chef kitchen are over. I wouldn't feel right cooking what I cook staying in the competition. It's just that I'm going home on the back of a completely atrocious dish. You made it to the top seven and had an epic journey. But it's now time to leave the Master Chef kitchen. Please say your goodbyes. You know, I've made some really good friends. Never forget you. <laughs> and I love cooking, so cooking in different places and different challenges I'm going to miss. I'm so looking forward to seeing my wife and my daughter and um, sort of absolutely no regrets. And I'm definitely going to do uh, to Duck and Choir for Christmas dinner. It's been an awesome ride. <laughs>